Welcome back. This is concept development practice page 1.1. In these concept development pages, we're interested in, in not memorizing something, but understanding uh, the, the concept enough that you can make some educated guesses about things that you don't know anything at all about. You can truly understand something, then you can expand and make predictions on things that are new to you. So this first is talking about science. Uh, the Greek word for, for science, scientia, means knowledge, to know. So science is stuff that we know, or things that we think we know. It's what we know at the moment, and a lot of times science expands because what we know is then modified by what we find out. And so the, the knowledge bank, or the bank of facts, changes as new things are understood better than they used to be. We can only know what we know, you know? Okay, so here's some examples, and these are some of them uh, silly, some of them cute, whatever. Um, here's an example. We see that items in the store priced at $2.98, $3.98, $4.98, etc. Why not $3 or $4 or $5? Make a hypothesis for this by finishing the following. Items in a store are usually priced one or two cents lower than the nearest dollar because... Okay, why would you imagine... So I want you to stop the video and talk in your table. And why would you imagine that, that people are more likely to buy something if it's $3.98 than if it's $4? Okay, we're back. I hope that you started the video again. Stop and talk with your table and then come back. So if I think that it's 3 something. I'm more likely to pay it than if I think it's for something, even if it's only two cents less. So it's almost it's like a psychological trick, probably. I don't know what you said, but that's a likely hypothesis. There's probably lots of things you came up with. Okay, number number two, suggest a way to test this hypothesis. Okay, so how would you test a hypothesis to say that people are more likely to buy something at three ninety eight than at four dollars? Okay. Stop the video and talk with your table. Okay, we're back. I think the easiest way would be to have one store that sold the same item at different prices. They, would, they could, for instance, sell it at $4 for two weeks, and then the next week sell it at $3.98 and see which one had the higher sales. Or two identical stores in the same city and one could sell it at four dollars the other at 398 and then compare the sales you're trying to to get it as close to everything being out, um, ruled out except the price that's what you're looking for okay the bottom of the page we had uh, a story of of in the old days if people had a five dollar bill they it required the clerk to go to the owner to get the change. And if that were happened, then your clerk couldn't cheat you. So uh, what would you do to test that as a hypothesis? So we're looking at something that happened in the past, something that you don't know anything about. How would you see if that's a, a good proposal or not? So they say, uh, tradition and custom started about the 498 or whatever. How would you support the hypothesis that store owners established pricing policies to protect themselves against sales clerks? Hint, imagine you have a librarian friend who has information about F, uh, F.W. Woolworth. Woolworth was the first dime store uh, back in the early 1900s. So if he had information about that, how would that help you know whether these stores established these properties uh, policies to protect the customer from their own dishonest sales clerks. Okay. Okay. Pause the video, please. Okay. We're back. How about go to the library, find out these books, read about Woolworth. Perhaps it's mentioned there and then you can go further with that. So a lot of times in science, it's not that you're breaking new ground all the time. You're finding out what other people have found out that you didn't know about. So research is a very important part of science, uh, not just conducting experiments. Okay, so on the other side of the page, it's well known that the things generally expand when heated. 
An iron plate gets slightly bigger, for example, when you put it in a hot oven. But what if a hole in the middle of the iron? Well, the hole gets smaller or bigger with the expansion occurs. One friend says the size of the hole will increase, another says decrease. So talk at your table. What is your hypothesis about the hole size? And if you're wrong, is there a test of finding out if you're wrong? Okay, so do you think that if you heated a plate, an iron plate with a hole in it, the hole would get bigger along with the plate, or would the hole get smaller and the plate get bigger, or the hole remains same as the plate gets bigger? Pause the video and talk with your table. We're back. What did you think? It actually turns out that the hole gets bigger along with the, uh, with the iron plate. That's why bridges uh, have two iron plates together like teeth so that you don't fall in the hole. Okay, As, as it expands and the hole gets bigger, uh, at least you have something to drive over as, the, as it contracts and expands. So uh, cold bridges will shrink together and the teeth come together and warm bridges will expand and the teeth pull apart and the teeth allow you to at least have something for your tires to drive on. Okay. Um, this next one says there's often several ways to test a hypothesis. For example, you can perform an experiment and witness it yourself or you can go to the library and find results of other investigators. Which of these two do you favor? And why would one be better than another necessarily? Okay, pause the video and talk with your table. Okay, we're back on 2B. Um, both are good. Like if you don't trust uh, trust uh, another scientist, you don't think his, his uh, data was good, you can try to prove him wrong. Or you can try to prove him right. So when there's a breakthrough in science, thousands of different uh, universities will test the same thing. Someone that said that they can cure cancer, suddenly everybody in the world is doing that very same uh, experiment to see if they can get the results at the same time. So both has its good. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. If the wheels have been invented, find out about it and, and record it and you can, build, you can stand on the shoulders of giants. The last one we're gonna do today is number three. By the time of the printing press, Books were hand copied by scribes. Many of them were monks in monasteries. There's a story of the scribe who was frustrated to find a smudge on an important page he was copying. The smudge blotted out the part of the sentence that reported the number of teeth in the head of a donkey. The scribe was very upset and didn't know what to do. He consulted with other scribes to see if their books had stated the number of teeth in the head of a donkey, and after many hours of fruitless searching through the library, it was suggested that the best thing to do was send a messenger by donkey to the next monastery and continue the search there. What would your advice be? Okay. Talk together. It's a little silly to send a, a, a messenger on a donkey without looking at the donkey's mouth. The donkey, donkey himself has teeth, and you can count those teeth, as long as the donkey hasn't missed any teeth. In any case, this is, just, uh, this is just a way of looking deeper into something rather than trying to memorize something. I hate memorizing something. I always get it wrong anyway. Okay, so fill out this. Put your name. You don't need to do the last one. You can read it uh, and make a comment if you want at the bottom of the page, and then just turn this in in the box. Thank you.